So, uh, I'm a technologist, but I deal with content. Um, I've got 47 minutes and 48 seconds um, to talk to you about building an actionable plan for content and platform success. And what I mean by that, we'll go through. Um, this is what I promised you. A um, lot of text, that's what you read inside your books. But I've sort of distilled it down into a number of areas. The thing on the, the left-hand side is telling you how long I'm going to spend on that little topic. And then the first thing I'm going to talk about is the connected customer journey. This is the reason why we do what we do. Um, I'll go into more detail about that. But the first thing that you need to know about the connected customer journey is around we need to build superior digital experiences. Those experiences drive what we call something called the global digital estate. And that, in effect, is when you think about all the properties, all your campaigns, all your landing sites, all your emails, the way in which that connects up, we need to think about that holistically. And the way we've been thinking about it at Cognified is that all of that comes together in what we call the global digital estate. And we're going to walk you through a couple of examples of what we mean by that. But most importantly, it's the way in which you approach the problem. Because the way in which we're seeing people approach the problem is very much tactically and, and also in silos. And also organizationally, there are a lot of things that we need to do to actually make this thing a success. And then I'm going to go through some very clear case studies that actually walk you through some of the problems and how they've been fixed with various clients. Then we're going to have a little wrap up. So first of all, let's um, talk about the challenge of the connected customer journey. Why do we do this? And it is around customer centricity, so I'm not going to blow smoke. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Revenue, profitable revenue is the reason that it's being driven. People need, businesses need to make revenue. The second thing they need to do is they need to build the relationships with the customers. Customers exist, businesses exist for customers, and what they're trying to do now is build more relationships with them, because when you have the relationships and you have the customers, you have a reason and a purpose for being. And the last thing is to develop relevancy. And what I mean by relevancy is everything we do has to be relevant to the customer. So customer centricity is the reason why we have these connected customer journeys. Now, the problem we had is that when we first started, a lot of this was just talking about going from analog, which is your fax machine, your snail mail, to just getting onto the web. And everybody focused, and I think they still do, about focusing on how to get online and get the web channel up and running. It is a boring, a very boring, and quite myopic way of thinking because there are many more channels that we need to consider. And so when I see a lot of the problems around content, most people are talking about web CMSs. They're talking about how to create websites and personalized experiences purely for the desktop channel. Although it's important, there's a lot of things, and I think um, Joe and also um, Robert were talking about, we need to think broader. We need to think about the business strategy. And a couple of our customers are now starting to think around the entire customer journey. So we have customers where they're starting to think about, if I've got a piece of content, it needs to be available on the fridge. It needs to be available in the car. It needs to be available absolutely everywhere. And it's not just playing lip service to that. We are being actively asked, how the hell do we get our content in a, in a way that it can be delivered and accessed in all of these different mediums? And it's an absolute challenge, because most of the content that is entered is entered through the web channel, and it can't be accessed or available across the other channels. But we need to transform to enable that to happen. So the connected customer journey is really to increase the revenues, to build the relationships, and develop that relevancy. So let's go back to the need. And the need for all of that is really, let's give, have a concrete example here. Anyone heard of Farfetched? I'm surprised. Have you heard of it? Farfetched, my other half loves shoes. She buys lots of shoes. The problem she has is that when she goes into one of the local stores, Oxford Street down in London, and she goes into a shop and she tries to buy a pair of shoes, she's a size six. In London, size six is very popular, and therefore it's never available. However, the same shoe in Italy, size six is not a size that that's, it's not very popular, but size seven is. So what this far-fetched is, is there's 300 boutiques around the world. And so you can go to this website and then select a, a shoe, and it gives you access to all shoes in those 300 boutiques around the world. Why is this important? The experience is superior. If anyone who's been to Farfetch will know that the experience of buying shoes or anything else is better than anything. You can actually get returns very quickly. 
The, it's just like Uber. The experience is driving the business strategy. It's driving the value. And it makes it stand out from everyone else. They've also got all the assets. They've got all the content in one place. So from the manufacturers of the shoes, they shoot the asset, and there's a master, master copy of all that, that asset available across all the boutiques. And so what we're seeing is they are starting to leverage the content in one place and make it accessible to all those other places on the web. And then they've got it on the mobile. And now they're looking for TV. And they're growing the channels. By growing the channels, they're building the relationships with the customers across. They're also personalizing so they can develop the relationship, develop the re um, relevancy inside each one of those channels. Now. I want to talk about above the line IT. The technology people in here will, will understand that there's a lot of, this slide, there's a lot of technology that is available to actually build those experiences. There's a lot of marketing technologies out there that will do the social, that will do the desktop, will do all of those things. But this is the universe that we're working, and it has to be extremely quick. This above the line IT allows you to create and destroy digital properties very quickly. But below the line is where you've got systems of record, booking systems, quote and buy systems. You've got um, transactional systems. But these systems don't change very often. So if you've got a financial transaction system, you, we know how to withdraw, we know how to deposit, we know how to transfer. These are things that don't change very often. For quote and buy systems, we know what a quote is, we know what a claim is. The way in which these systems are moving is quite slow. Stability, security, very slow. But the through the line IT is where you build integrations so that those systems, those above the line IT systems, those very quick marketing technologies that allow you to build those experiences, you use those, that through the line IT, those integrations to get access to those below the IT systems. So you can now start saying, for quote and buy, for, um, for a, um, an insurance uh, piece, you can now change the way in which you fundamentally do insurance. And the way you do that is you can be a startup company that can create those experiences using the above the line IT. So let me give you an example of that. We call it three speeds. And the reason I'll call it three speeds, I'll just go into this very quickly. The challenge is really the experience. Now, what's happening here is a lovely little tree on the left-hand side over there. The above-the-line IT is what is the user experience. And it used to represent 30% of how we used to build systems. And below the line IT is where we spent a lot of time developing those really, really back-end systems, 70% of the time. But what's happening is that a lot of time now is being spent developing the user experience, because that is where the business value is. So we're seeing the amount of time spent in the back-end systems being a lot. It's not, it's not as much being spent there. Most of the time is being spent in developing the content, developing the author experience, and developing the consumer experience. And so what we're seeing is a shift in skills. People are doing a lot inside the above-the-line stuff with these marketing technology pieces. They're spending less time in the fundamental stability and security pieces that we see. This means that the focus is on the experience. So what does that mean in terms of a solution for us? If we've got a connected customer journey that needs to go across all those channels, and we realize that we need to fundamentally have a different way of developing superior digital experiences, how do you manage that? How do you go into an organization and say, I need to have these connected customer journeys across these very, very unique customer experiences? How do I build and manage my estate as one? And so imagine it like a city. So if you think about the marketeers, their responsibility is to build all the cities, to build these various um, these towers, these buildings, whatever you call them. And that is moving the customer experience from one property to the next. The ability to create these properties at speed is what they need. So let's go through a couple of things here. Scale and simplicity. Scale is I need to be able to create one property, but I need it to be available not only in the UK, 
but it to be available across the globe. And I need that to be as simple as possible. Now, if you go home, if you go into, your, uh, into work, you see that sometimes you have a content management system, and then you, you're normally used to a Google, you're used to an Uber, you're used to those experiences. But when you go back into work and you have to create stuff using the properties and the availability of the tools inside your workplace, they're clunky. So you need to be able to create these properties in a simple way. The next thing is speed and stability. You need to be able to create them fast, but you also need them to be stable. Now, my definition of agility, and I hear the word agility a lot, agility is not just speed. Agility has to have an element of stability. So to me, agility is speed times stability. If you don't have stability, you don't have the speed. If you don't have speed, <laughs> there's no point in having agility as well. And so it's like having jelly. If you don't have the stability, it's like everything you build will fall down. So you need stability. Also, but you need the speed to actually say that you are agile. The next thing is global local. So for your global digital estate, you need to be able to have that ability to have that global control, but for local benefit. And when we say local benefit, the idea of global in some of our customers is you need to be able to make sure that the locals are profitable. So the way to actually get global thinking about how do, I, how do I operate globally but have the local, the local initiative is make sure everything you do at global make, is make someone at the local level profitable. What, too many times we see the local rejecting it because global says it's going to be $50,000 to produce this, this corporate website when you know locally it can be done for $5,000. Why would the local presence ever go with global? The next thing is rich and consistent. For across each one of these journeys, you need to, whatever you need to do, is it has to be consistent. If you have an experience in one country, in Germany, and then you build another site over in, in Italy, that consistency is important. But so many times you see different properties being built, and the experience is a jarring experience going from one to the other. When you build a global digital estate, you want one brand design. You want one way to enforce it. You want to make sure whatever gets created is consistent in every single property that you deliver. And then there's the agency and partner thing. Agencies normally build stuff on behalf of clients. But if you've got a global account, you may have 50 different agencies. And those 50 different agencies will have 50 different ways of the way in which they think they should enforce the brand. And that means you don't have the consistency. And the last thing is, in the global digital state, you need to be able to have a broad relationship with your, with your customer base, and also it needs to be personalized around every one of those channels.